When America falls, the first people that will be persecuted are the Christians. The first people that will be persecuted heavily are the Christians. And why is the Lord Jesus allowing it? Because the Lord in the end of times will be separating the sheep from the goats as Christians. So he will separate the genuine Christians from the fake Christians. Christians by name separated from the Christians by deed. So when the United States fall, Christians will be persecuted by the next superpower and more than likely it will be China backed up by Russia. Because the brain behind China is Russia. So when that happens, Christians will be persecuted. Those who are fake, they will give in. But those who are genuine, they will be tortured extremely. That's why heaven is rejoicing, because there will be people on earth, Christians on earth, that will glorify the name of their Lord, because they will be faithful, loyal to the Lord till the very end. That's why heaven rejoiced when America fell. Not because America fell, heaven rejoiced, but by the fall of America, the genuine Christians glorified the Lord in the sight of the whole world. That's why heaven rejoiced. There are still uh, wonderful eyewitnesses for the Lord that will give genuine testimony to the Lord Jesus. You know, this is why the Lord allows us to go through trouble sometimes and some rough seas. Why does he allow us to do that? Because he wants us to learn about ourselves. The most obscure, unknown person to you is you. You think you know yourself. No, you don't. Because when you go through some dark tunnels, you will be shocked on how much you lack on knowing yourself. So that's why the Lord allows those rough seas in order to teach us about ourselves. When we're comfortable, we say, Lord, I love you. When we're happy, we go to the church. We read the Holy Bible. We come, we go, we say Jesus Christ is the only way. But when we get tested, when we go through trials, are we going to be the same? Or are we going to be shaken up? Yeah? So you need to find out about yourself and learn about yourself. The rough seas, the dark tunnels, the troublesome times, the heavy burdens are the times where you discover yourself. Amen? There you go. So you can say, Lord, I love you, but it's uh, easy said than done. You need to live the Lord. No, don't just talk about Him. In verse 20, John the Beloved divides heaven into two categories. Divides heaven into two categories. One is holy apostles, two prophets. He divides it into two categories, holy apostles and prophets. If we look, and I always advise on this, when you read the Holy Bible, you need to focus on the way it's written, on the order it's written. You need to really focus. Example, St. Paul, for example, he talks about the Lord. He says, Jesus Christ. Other times he says Christ Jesus. If you are not familiar how the Holy Bible talks, you will miss the point and so pivotal because there is a huge difference by putting Jesus Christ, Jesus first, then Christ, or by putting Christ first, then Jesus. Total different meaning. So when you read, you need to see the order of the words, the names being mentioned because it is the Holy Spirit, the author, who is God, the author of this book, inspiring certain people to write it, but the author is God himself, the Holy Spirit. So when we look, if we notice here, he didn't say, John the Beloved, uh, he didn't say apostles and holy men, apostles and saints, he said holy apostles. He said, holy apostles and prophets. When we read the Holy Bible in other parts, you will notice prophets and apostles being mentioned. Prophets and apostles. When you see this kind of a 
chronological order, prophets and apostles being mentioned. Here he's referring to the prophets of the Old Testament when the word prophets precedes the word apostles. He's talking about the Old Testament prophets. However, in verse 20 here, in Revelation 18 verse 20, he's putting holy apostles, then prophets. Prophets here in verse 20 are the prophets of the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Holy apostles and prophets are the prophets of the New Testament, not the Old. Another thing, when John the Beloved mentions holy apostles, well, when he mentioned the word holy, that means there are also unholy apostles, evil, false apostles. Since there are holy apostles, well, since he mentioned there is holy apostles, that meant also there is unholy apostles. Otherwise, why would he say holy apostles? He would have just said apostles and finish it off. But no, by putting the word holy before apostles, he's trying to tell us that there are apostles who are unholy, i.e. false apostles. Be careful, be careful of them. Now the question is, is there false apostles or unholy? Does God send false apostles? Well, I'll take you to the Old Testament and there was this king of Israel called King Ahab. Now King Ahab, God came and asked this question, who can seduce this king? Who can trap this king? Who can make this king fall into wrongdoings? God said, who can do that? Satan came along and said, I can. He said that to God, I can. What I'll do, I will bring my foul spirit and bestow it upon that king. And then I'll let his all prophets, his all prophets to prophesy wrongly until he starts doing wrong things and finally destroying himself. So the false apostles are influenced by Satan and you'll find them all in the church, the holy and the unholy. That's why those who attacked the Lord Jesus were people of the church temple. The temple of the Old Testament is the church of the New Testament. What's the difference? So who attacked the Lord Jesus? Not strangers. Those who went against him, those who sold him, those who said crucify him, they were his own people, the people of the temple, the Israelite, the worshipers of the true divine God. They ended up being the crucifiers of the true divine God. And today, when you speak the truth, who attacks you first? Christians, not strangers, Christians. They crucify you because whatever happened to your master will happen to you if you are forking in the footprints of the Lord Jesus. What do you do? This is life. I'll send him a fish burger and then I'll smack him across the head. Now, when a person is distant from God, foul spirit will accompany that person. When a person is distant from God, foul spirit will accompany that person. And then what happened to that person? He start working, going, coming, talking, doing things, thinking he is doing everything right, yet without knowing everything he does is wrong. Why? Because he's being influenced by foul spirits. And when Satan controls, that person becomes blind. No matter what they say or do, they won't even realize they're doing it wrong. Satan can blind anyone who is distant from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't ever think you are smart enough for Satan. You're not. The moment you leave the Lord Jesus, Satan will devour that person and they won't even know what hit them. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Even if that person is a pope, a patriarch, a cardinal, a bishop, a priest, or someone who is faithful. Doesn't matter. Don't think you're the, you're the Pope. That's it. Um, Satan can't. No, 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 no. He will, he will turn you around and spin you around so fast you won't even, you'll lose track where your head is and where your feet are. You lose track. I'm going to show you. The only one who protects you from Satan is the Lord. It's God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not your wealth, not your education, not your intelligence intelligence nothing 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 it's the Lord the other side 
It's totally different. In the spiritual path, you cannot use your head. One day, we're going to talk about spiritual life. In the spiritual path, this cannot function. Your intelligence cannot function. Why? Because it's something above and beyond your intellectual capacity. It's a spiritual path. The brain can only function in the tangible physical path. The moment you are out of the tangible realm, the brain will go numb and it will become dumb. Numb and dumb. Can't function. So when that person walks away from the Lord, Satan will influence that person and they won't even know what they're doing. They think they are doing the right thing, not realizing it is all wrong. Because distancing yourself from God will lead to spiritual blindness. Distancing one's self from God will lead to spiritual blindness. And today the world is spiritually blind. Doesn't matter you see physically. The physical sight is nothing compared to the spiritual sight. Without the spiritual sight, the physical one is blind even if it's opened. It's blind. That's why the world is acting absolute in blindness. And they are saying we are geniuses. The medical field is so advanced, we can, we can modify viruses. The scientific field is so advanced, we can prove the existence of the universe. Give us another 13.5 billion years, we'll let you know. Because it's been over 13.5 billion since something exploded. So they need another 13.5 to find out whether they came from a gorilla or not. So the geniuses, they are now boast, boasting about their superpower weapons. So come Mr. Genius, you've created the nuclear weapon, correct? Yes, I'm a genius. Wow. So your wisdom, your genius led you to total human destruction. What a genius. So one rocket in Australia, you can kiss it goodbye. So this is the intelligence of the human being. Oh, and in recent times, it's gradually coming on board and it's going to explode. And I pray not the AI, artificial intelligence. What a bunch of losers. Miserable losers. They don't know any better. Blinded by Satan. Why? Because they denied God who is Jesus Christ. Satan is controlling them. Brilliant, genius losers. Well, when someone distanced themselves from God, that will lead them to spiritual blindness. On the other hand, if someone gets closer to God, the holy apostles will accompany that person. This is where we come. Those who get closer to God, the holy apostles will accompany that person. Who are the holy apostles? The angels of heaven. The angels of heaven will accompany the person who is close to God. Let me tell you, my beloved sons and daughters, let me tell you one thing. Angels do wonders in our life, yet we don't eat listening to His Word. You'll be reading His Word. You'll be living His Word. And when you live His Word, you are in the light. And when you're in the light, Satan, who is darkness, cannot comprehend you. Because what overcomes darkness is the light. Darkness cannot overcome the light. Why? Because darkness is non-existent. What scientists can measure is the light, not darkness. Because God never created darkness. Because darkness is the result of the absence of light. And that's why when Jesus Christ comes, who is the light of the world, as he said, when he comes, Satan cannot exist anymore because Satan is darkness. When the light shines forth, darkness can only do one thing, disappear. So when you have the Lord Jesus, you will step on Satan and you will crush Satan in his own territory. Hell, be close to the Lord. So your spiritual eye is opened. And when your spiritual eye is opened, I can assure you, my beloved child, it is then and then only you'll understand this world is vanity. What are you chasing? I don't know what the church is doing. They're attacking someone talking about the Lord. 
Hey, listen, wake up, you blind. Instead of putting your hand in my hand and my hand in your hand and going seeking our lost children, which Satan has taken to the world, has taken him to drugs, alcoholism, gambling, destructive things. Instead of coming together, uniting, you blind people, uniting, uniting. Oh, now this person doesn't say Jesus Christ is two natures. He says one nature, that get in life. What a sick mentality, sick. Our sons and daughters are being lost by the day to Satan. And look at us geniuses talking about things we will never fully understand. Can anyone come and explain to me the nature of God? Until when are you going to remain sick in the head? Until when? You Catholics, you Orthodox, you Protestant. Until when? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Everyone says I'm right. Yet everyone is wrong. Everyone. Where is the wisdom? Where is the intelligence here? We need to come together to save our sons and daughters from the mouth of Satan. We're too busy attacking each other. We're too busy attacking each other. Until when? Until when? We embraced the pandemic and now we're embracing the LGBT. Geniuses. Geniuses. Absolute geniuses. Absolute geniuses. Do you see how Satan has blinded even Christendom? Why? Because we became too preoccupied with the throne. We forgot the honor of the throne. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are so right about your faith and you hold the truth, you should have stood against evil in 2020. If you hold the truth, shouldn't you be standing and being a warrior for the truth? Where were you in 2020? You were encouraging your flock to put the poison in their bodies. Why? Because traitors do that. Cowards do that. Not real men of God. Blind people do that. Not those who are opened by the hand of the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you're telling me about talking about truth? Don't ever talk about truth. Because you're blind. You're blind. And I'm speaking with love. But love can cry out in the wilderness of this world too. <laughs> I'm not angry. This is a holy zeal for the house of the Lord. Holy zeal. I'm not angry. I love you. I'll cook you red rice, tabbouleh, baba ghanoush, anything you want. Italian, uh, Italian pizza, whatever you want, brother. I don't, but we need to wake up. Enough, man. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord, have mercy, honestly. It's unbelievable. Anyway, so when you come closer to God, his angels will surround you, the holy apostles, and his word will engulf you. It will open your spiritual eye. You will see everything Satan is doing in this world. Lost to Satan. My goodness. Now, who are the prophets? Are they, they are the New Testament ones, not the old, because they came after the apostles. If you put prophets and apostles, that's the Old Testament prophets. If you put apostles and prophets, they're New Testament prophets, of course. Let's read in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. It's not on the screen. 1 Corinthians 13, 14, sorry. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. St. Paul says this. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Wow. But he who prophesies, that's the New Testament, prophesies, speaks, edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He who prophesies in the New Testament does three things. Edification one, exhortation two, comfort to men three. Let's look at this. Prophets of the New Testament speak edification. What is edification? Improving, instructing, and enlightenment of others. Improving others, instructing others, and enlightening other people's life. That's edification. What's exhortation? Strongly encouraging or trying to persuade people to do things of good nature. Strongly encouraging or trying to persuade people to do things of good nature. And giving, number three, giving comfort to people. New Testament prophets do the following. 
teach, encourage, and comfort people. How? By preaching the word of the Lord Jesus to people. When you, when you are sitting with people and you start talking to them about the Lord, you start sharing the word of the Lord Jesus with them, what are you doing to them? You are teaching them, you are instructing them, and you are comforting them. Because the only one who can teach is God. The only one who can instruct is God. The only one who can comfort is God. His God, God gave His Son to be everything in our life. So the, the prophets of the New Testament teach, encourage, and comfort people by preaching the Word of God to them. Now the question is, do we see ourselves as the prophets of the New Testament? Where are we in relation to New Testament prophets? Do we talk to people which God gave us about Him, about God? Mom, do you share the Lord Jesus with your family? Dad, do you share the Lord Jesus with your family? Brother, do you talk to your family, to your other siblings about the Lord? Cousin, do you talk to your cousins about the Lord? Church, do you talk to the flock about the Lord or do you talk about investments? By the way, we've got billions of dollars in assets. We've got millions and billions of dollars in cash. We are a rich church. You are rich with material, but you are poor in spirituality. The Lord Jesus did not die for me and you to build him churches of bricks and mortar. Jesus died for me and you to bring and build people and hearts for him, not brick and mortar. Are we the New Testament prophets? Do we share the Lord with everyone that comes our way? Do we talk about people? Did you know in the good olden days, I'm not sure if it was done in the uh, a tradition in the West, but in the East, where I come from, I can tell you this. When somebody visited someone at their place, the moment they entered the house, the visitors, the visitors when they entered the house, they would ask the owners of that house to bring them the Holy Bible. This was tradition in the good olden days. Bring us the Holy Bible before sitting down, before drinking a glass of water, before eating anything in that house, bring me the Holy Bible. Let me read a verse or two to everyone in this house they started the visit with the word of the lord and what happened everybody started talking about the lord everybody became enlightened taught instructed and comforted it's not the food and the drinks that comfort you and teach you it's the word that feeds you and enlightens you